So you like the career mode, huh? The career mode is good, huh? I'll get you some more career mode after we preview and predict what's gonna happen in this weekend's biggest games, and then after a cutthroat FIFA, and then after something happens during the weekend. And we're gonna start with Chelsea versus Manchester City. Unfortunately for City fans, this fixture has had a little shine taken off of it over the last couple days, because first, City left back Benjamin Mendy ruptured his ACL and is set to be out until next year, which sucks. And then just yesterday, Sergio Aguero was involved in a car crash, but luckily, he only suffered fractured ribs over something that could have been much worse. Fortunately though, for City fans and City manager Pep Guardiola, even without these two key players being out, the team still has a truckload of stars available for what should be considered the game of the weekend in all of Europe. Now while all eyes have been focused on both Manchester teams and their unbeaten starts of the season, Chelsea have been equally impressive and have showed no signs, minus losing the first game of the season to Burnley, though they had two red cards of a title winning hangover and their good form was on full display when manager Antonio Conte's side produced one hell of a dominant performance in their away win against Atletico Madrid on Wednesday in the Champions League. City on the other hand, and let's say this hand, have been way more ruthless in their start to the season, averaging over three goals per game while keeping clean sheets in six of their eight games, which is probably the most impressive stat for them this season given their defensive woes last season. And with Conte doing the double over Pep last season, winning those two matches by a combined score of 5-2 as Chelsea marched towards the title, I just can't see Pep letting Conte get the best of him again, so I'm gonna say 2-2. And next up, it's AC Milan versus Roma. Former Roma striker, now current Milan manager Vincenzo Montella, who should be replaced by manager Eno in the near future, if you guys know what I'm talking about, has been on the hot seat and should be on the hot seat since Milan are in sixth after six games and only boasts a plus two in goal differential after a huge summer of spending. And with Carlo Ancelotti now available, you have to think that Montella is under more pressure to have an impression season. On Thursday, Milan needed a 90th minute penalty winner to win the Europa League fixture against powerhouse Croatian side Rijeka. And no, they're not a powerhouse. And no, it wasn't an away tie. It was at the San Siro, just like where this game is going to be played. And with Roma having won their last two visits at the San Siro against Milan, winning 3-1 and 4-1 respectively. And with last season's Serie A Golden Boot winner Edin Dzeko scoring six goals in his last four games for Roma, I just feel like Roma is going to win this one. Three to two, and then hopefully Inyo will come in. Yeah. And up next, it's Real Madrid versus Espanyol. Now Madrid come into this game with a head-to-head -head record so superior, which is 21 games unbeaten over Espanyol, including outscoring them 29 to two in their last 10 meetings. It's almost unfair. But if there's any consolation to you, Espanol fans, it's that you've outscored Madrid five to three in red cards in this matchup historically. So you've got that going for you, which must be nice. And it must make Sergio Ramos pretty jealous. However, this is a Madrid team that have had a real, or shall I say, real slow start to the season, finding themselves in sixth place after six games, already seven points behind their rivals, Barcelona. So we'll see if they can start to get it together in La Liga since they've already figured it out in the Champions League after their 3-1, what, what, what beat down a Borussia Dortmund in Dortmund, though Dortmund's tactics, if I may say, were questionable at best. You don't play a high line if you can't get consistent pressure on the ball. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, Madrid needs to win this and I think they will, 3-0. And actually, let's continue our conversation about German clubs and talk a little Hertha Berlin versus Bayern Munich because the big news surrounding this game is of course the sacking of Don Carlo Ancelotti just a few months after he won the Bundesliga. Yeah, that's right, it is true. Bayern's club president Uli Honus revealed in a statement that Ancelotti's position at the club became untenable after five players turned against him. Of course, he didn't have the courage to reveal who the players were, but the rumor to be Mats Hummels and Jerome Boateng, who Ancelotti benched against PSG on Wednesday, Bayern's favorite son Thomas Muller, who isn't exactly best mates with Don Carlo either, and elder statesman Franck Ribéry and Arjen Robben. And with the draw last week to Wolfsburg after going up 2-0, followed by a 3-0 spanking by his former club PSG, well, that pretty much sealed his fate, which now gives him the distinct honor of being sacked three times in his career after coming off winning the league title the season before, which has to be some kind of record. Though, let's be honest. I think it's Bayern's backup goalkeeper who fucked this all up because if he had made a few saves in the absence of Manuel Neuer, I think all of this would have been a lot different. However, with Don Carlo now out of the way, the Bayern players, especially the ones that turned against him, have no excuse for poor performances, which up until this point has given Bayern their worst start since the 2010-2011 season when Dortmund were crowned champions. Also, I should mention, 
Hertha Berlin is pretty good at home, so this isn't gonna be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination. But I expect Bayern to get that new coach bump, you know, that, that something is fresh is happening, where everybody's excited to play again, so they're gonna win 3-1. And speaking of PSG, who I believe I just mentioned as doing some spanking. Let's see how they do this weekend against third place Bordeaux. Because after dropping their first points of the season away at Montpellier last week and dealing with the aftermath of the Cavani versus Neymar situation with relatively little drama, they bounced back to crush an uninspired Bayern Munich 3-0 midweek, which showed yet again that the front three of Kylian Mbappe, Edinson Cavani, and Neymar could be the best front three in the whole entire world. So as much as I love that Bordeaux is enjoying one of their best starts since they won the league back in 2009, which which includes a star-making turn by 20-year-old Brazilian forward Malcolm, who has three goals and four assists this season, and who will most definitely want to perform well since everyone will be watching this match. Bordeaux has no PSG this season. In fact, no one is like PSG this season, and PSG is going to win 3-0. And now let's head back to England for Newcastle versus Liverpool, which is the reunion game of the weekend since Liverpool will be reunited with one of the club's modern-day icons who left a while ago. His name is John Joe Shelby, and they'll also be reunited with the man who led them to two Champions League finals and that miracle in Istanbul, Rafa Benitez. In fact, the last time Rafa Benitez faced Liverpool while coaching Chelsea, it was a 97th minute goal by Luis Suarez that denied him all three points. The game ended 2-2. This time, however, he faces them with newly promoted Newcastle, who were on a three-game winning streak until Brighton beat them last week. F off, Brighton. That's my club. Assholes. As for Liverpool, well, they've been stinking up the joint recently, drawing games all over Europe and giving up a ton of goals, which isn't all that surprising because as I've said countless times, their defense is gonna be their undoing. But with Coutinho regaining his pre-back injury form and Mohamed Salah looking more and more like a very, very, very good signing, they might still have enough firepower to outlast any poor defending. But I think Newcastle will be up for this, especially at home, so I'm gonna say, 2-2. And now let's head to the Iberian Peninsula for Sporting Clube de Portugal versus Porto and what has to be the biggest game of this new season in Portugal because this result could determine which of these two clubs is going to hold off Benfica from winning the league for the fifth straight time. And with Benfica struggling this season both in the league and in the Champions League, do you guys see that last result? Both Sporting and Porto have to know the magnitude of this game so I expect it to be played at a high level and with great intensity. However, if we go by current form, Sporting are struggling to score goals. They've only mustered one in their last three games in all competitions, while Porto have the best offense and defense in the Portuguese league at the moment, and are coming off a 3-0 win over Monaco midweek in the Champions League. So I think, even though Sporting has beaten Porto in three out of their last four matchups, Porto's gonna win this, and I know it's on the road, but they're gonna win it two to zero. And you guys thought I was gonna say two one, didn't you? Well, I didn't. Yeah. Suck it. And now let's talk a little MLS and the Philadelphia Union versus the Seattle Sounders. And mainly because I never talk about the Union because they're consistently bad and I just don't know why. I'm a fan of Ernie Stewart who runs Point in the front office and their coach, Jim Curtin, and their players and their fans and their stadium that's right on the water and has some beautiful sight lines. And yet, they're one of the worst teams in the league and I just don't get it. And now they are one loss away from being eliminated from the playoffs. And they're probably gonna lose that too because that's what they do. And I don't know, I don't even know what to say. I feel bad for them. And finally, let's head south of MLS to Mexico for Toluca versus Club America, which is second versus third in the table. But surprisingly, both clubs have pretty poor goal differentials, only a plus three since they both scored 14 and given up 11 for being so high up the table. But that's part of the charm of Liga MA Keys, and that's what I love about it. And with America in the midst of a poor run of form, winning just once in six games, I think Toluca, who've won four out of their last six, will take this at home and close the gap on Monterey, who have a four-point lead at the top. All right, that's it. That is all I got except for this. More career mode is coming your way. We have one last episode of Cutthroat FIFA between Hashtag Tass and Gorilla, who won the FIFA Interactive World Cup. And I was there, I saw it. It's a good game between two professional players. And if you pick the right score before the game kicks off, you cheaters, for Newcastle versus Liverpool, you'll be entered to win a Warm Ballers t-shirt and some stickers. And also, this goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway, Warm Ballers for life, later. <laughs>